topic for today's session is decoupling Drupal. Let's make an educated decision about the right approach. So in this session, I would be talking about the approaches which are available to decouple Drupal. And also I would be touching about the trade-offs that a decoupled Drupal provides. Because um, as a decision maker of your project, like uh, a technical architect or a um, developer, you might want to know that what are the things that decoupled Drupal does not provide because that might impact your project in some way or the other. So I would be touching upon that. And at the end of this session, you might be able to make an educated decision about the right approach, right? So introducing myself, my name is Surbhi Srival. I work with Srijan Technologies. So Srijan has its headquarters back in India, New Delhi, and we have people working all across the globe. So at Srijan, I work primarily with the Drupal, and I have worked with Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 projects. On Twitter, I go by the handle Surbi Srival, and if you want to locate my profile on Drupal, you can hit either hit that link or search me in my complete name. And yeah, don't forget to uh, take this conversation live using my Twitter handle on the screen. Um, before I sort of begin, I would like to understand that uh, how many of you are currently working with Decoupled Drupal? Okay. Um, would you mind telling us, sir, what are you using as a front end? Um, I'm using uh, Next.js and React. Uh, and you? Same. Um, what are you using as a front end? Yeah, who raised that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You want to share? All of them. Okay, okay, great. And uh, how many of you are uh, still um, thinking of using a decoupled Drupal in, uh, in the near future? So I believe the rest of us have mostly worked with the traditional Drupal way, right? Okay. So this is a sort of agenda uh, that I'm going to cover in the next 25 minutes. So I will talk about what exactly is decoupled Drupal, why it makes sense, and to whom does it matter. So here I'll touch upon uh, various people, uh, the roles who are associated with Drupal, like they might be using Drupal or they might be developing Drupal, and how decoupling Drupal affects them and the factors that have led to the adoption of decoupled Drupal and why is it gaining popularity in recent times, possible ways of decoupling, API first Drupal at a glance and various uh, shapes and uh, structures that architecture can take, various trade-offs, why is a Drupal an ideal CMS and uh, final thoughts. I would conclude this session with some final thoughts. So let's begin. So what exactly is decoupled Drupal? Decoupled Drupal is nothing but CMS system as content service. So the content is uh, given in the form of APIs. And then this content is ready to be picked up by various external systems. So these systems could be anything like a JS system, uh, IoT, then mobile devices, then chatbots, any sort of these channels. And these channels are uh, not very much limited or, or confined. They are uh, increasing in number. Yeah, so many of these channels like chatbots are really new. So we can say that uh, this phenomena of a decoupled Drupal is gaining importance uh, in recent times and it is expected to gain even more importance in future. Decoupled Drupal is no, also known as headless Drupal and I might be using these terms interchangeably during my talk. Uh, why does it matter and to whom does it make sense? So from the angle of various personas, we have content creators, we have marketers, publishers, and then there is a species called developers, right? So why and how it makes sense to content creators? So I have seen people uh, approaching us and asking for solutions wherein they want to uh, write the content at one place and they want to publish it at various multiple channels without modifying the content repeatedly yeah so in decoupled drupal it is possible because the content is given in the form of apis and then this content is not in a very defined or a very decorative html format which might be limited to few systems but it is in a very organized manner like you can say a json <coughs> which is very organized and uh, globally accepted kind of a thing which can be easily read by any of the external systems and then can be integrated well and uh, the source of truth 
is still a single content repository which saves a lot of effort of uh, of micromanaging the content at various small channels so this is helpful for the content creators so these are developers a front end and a back end developer so for developers how is it important like you might be a front end developer or you might be a back end developer if you are a front end developer then it might be possible that you are not very much interested in working uh, with things which are limited to drupal so uh, in api first drupal uh, this is a benefit for you and you can uh, still consume drupal as a microservice without the need of uh, knowing the full stack which is a benefit right and uh, the front end developer has a very less dependency on the back end developer so uh, it's kind we are decoupling not just the architecture but we are decoupling the entire teams and uh, as you can see he's a js developer and um, uh, if you want to do a lot of experiment with the JS, so then decouple Drupal is for you. And uh, uh, as a front-end developer, you you may not want to use Drupal-specific uh, template engines like a Twig template. So decouple Drupal is again a benefit for you in that sense. Then <clears throat> the factors that led to the adoption of decoupled Drupal, I'm going to read this one. Separation of concerns for structure and presentation so that the backend and frontend teams can work independently. There might be a possibility that the backend is changing at a faster pace than uh, or a slower pace as compared to the frontend. So <clears throat> this is again a benefit. Along with decoupling the architecture, we are also decoupling teams. Uh, which can remove blocking between them and again this is a benefit for marketers and publishers because they uh, are uh, at a benefit of just writing at a one single place and getting it published to a lot of different channels what are the possible ways of using drupal so uh, the most common way is the monolithic or the traditional drupal way and then we have fully decoupled and progressively decoupled drupal so i'm gonna cover them one by one Let's first take monolithic implementation. As you all are aware, this is the single Drupal system that takes care of the both the concerns, the backend and the frontend concerns. So if you are a Drupal developer uh, who want to just remain primarily focused towards Drupal, then this type of uh, an arrangement is specifically for you. And also this type of Drupal provides all the Drupal in out of the box functionalities like uh, inline edits, the quick edits, the preview functionalities. So again, this is uh, a, a, a setup for this type of a project. The second is fully decoupled implementation. So fully decoupled implementation, um, it does not provide the out of the box functionalities, but it is for developers who are more centric around the JS part. They want to do a more, more of experimentation with respect to the JS framework. They want to interpolate some of the JS frameworks with their backend. So this type of um, uh, setup is for them and it is gaining uh, importance in recent times because of the growth of Java, JavaScript, which is uh, increasing day by day. And then there is progressively decoupled implementation. So this type of implementation is a balance between the first one and the second one. So what happens here is that uh, the content, the most of the static content of the site, um, which is not rapidly changing, like the footer or the header, that is mainly populated by Drupal initially, and then the rapidly changing blocks, they can be populated by JavaScript. So for example, there is a module decoupled block module which allows JavaScript frameworks to render their components into block. So let's just quickly have a look on uh, how API first Drupal actually is. So if you see on the screen, there is a blue bubble in the center. So it is nothing but it is the decoupled CMS and then the small uh, circles, they are the different channels. For example, you have native apps, we have chat apps, we have single page applications, IOTs, other backends, and then this list grows. So if you see a title and a body, so it is mainly, I want to represent here a node page, a Drupal node page, like a node app page or edit page. And the content creator is coming and uh, writing a content over here. So what is happening is this, as soon as this content is saved, it is 
it is rendered to different uh, channels, right? So the single source of truth is still a single repository that is the Drupal CMS. How decouple CMS works? So if you see on the left, there is a blue box CMS and on the right, there is an external consumer application. So this application makes an HTTP request to the CMS and then the CMS responds to this HTTP request with an HTTP response with the help of some sort of web service, REST API in this case, and then. So how is monolithic different from decoupled? So if you see on the left, there is no clear separation between the front end and the back end. However, if you see on the right, there is a very clear separation between the back end and the front end. So the data flows from the back end to the front end uh, in the form of let's say JSON in this case and passes through some sort of template engine. So yeah, this uh, type of architecture can def definitely take various shapes. So uh, on, this, on the previous slide uh, you saw a an orange box. So that orange box can actually take various shapes. It could be a JavaScript application or it could be a native Android app. And then the single content repository can serve multiple consumer. For example, in this case, if you see, the single Drupal repository is serving native iOS along with a PHP application. So as we all know, all good things come with some bad things. So this was what um, I have talked about, what, uh, what was good about decoupling Drupal. And definitely there are some trade-offs. So let's have a quick look at them. So what de decoupled Drupal does not provide, lack of in-context features like the quick edits, the menu links and all of these things, layouts. So if supposedly I am a content creator and I have, or I am a marketer and I have a very important event coming in, then I might want to make some landing pages for, for my site because I believe that it definitely adds to the business value and attracts more people. So this type of functionality, if it's needed, then it is not provided by decoupled Drupal out of the box. And if it's needed, then a lot of work has to be done in building that. Then no preview functionality. For example, if I'm a content creator, then I might want to preview my site, how the title looks on a mobile device and how it renders on desktop, how the images render. So the preview functionality is also not available out of the box and losing a preview functionality is really, really a painful thing. Along with this, uh, decoupled stack uh, is uh, relatively we can say it's complex as compared to the simple Drupal stack because it does not involve only Drupal but it also involves a lot of additional things uh, like external consumer application setup and things like that. So uh, it's definitely more challenging as compared to the traditional Drupal environment setup in terms of maintenance, in terms of cost and in terms of setup. So this was something uh, why we should not use decoupled Drupal, but then again there is a question that why is Drupal considered an ideal decoupled CMS? Why? Because Drupal is really, really mature. It's like 18 plus years old CMS now and we have a lot of, a lot of uh, big community support. The people at Drupal are really inviting and helpful. So it can really help newbies scale up, like if you're stuck with an issue, you can always reach out to the community. And um, what we have Drupal today is not what we had Drupal 10 years back. It's much more powerful. For example, REST API is being the part of the core and many such things. It's really, really powerful. And again, a very important thing, decoupled Drupal offers, like Drupal offers API first approach, right? But not the API only approach, which definitely offers people a lot of freedom to choose the type of uh, setup they want as per their uh, as per their needs. So what to consider before making a final decision? So if you are, uh, if you are planning uh, to choose from decoupled or uh, a normal Drupal, so what, uh, what, what factors you should keep in mind? So one of them is what do you intend to build? Yeah, and then what are the things that your project cannot live without? Are you more concerned about the disadvantages or you're more focused on the advantages? 
So I'm gonna pick them one by one. Let's take the first one first. So what do you intend to build? So do you intend to build standalone websites or do you intend to build multiple experiences including web, native, mobile, IoT, etc. So if you want to build standalone websites then maybe decoupling Drupal is not uh, very much preferred depending upon the developer and the content marketer, content creators and marketers need. So you have to keep a balance between the needs that your team needs and the 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 facilities which are asked by content creators and so there is no technical reason of uh, not decoupling Drupal if you have a single standalone website similarly there is nothing which is stopping us to decouple Drupal so basically you have to think that are you more focused towards your developer requirements or you are more focused toward what your content creators are asking for so uh, this is a sort of a flowchart that talks about are there things that the project can live without and what are these. So on the left if you see uh, the, there are certain things which are mentioned like do editors need to manipulate pages, content, layouts without a developer or do editor need in context tools like in place editing, context links, toolbars, do they need preview functionality, do they need security features like Drupal's HTML output or do editors need to uh, leverage Drupal's HTML output and on the right if you see the needs are more of the developer oriented needs like the full con con control on the visual presentation over editors then server side JavaScript to improve the app performance so do developers need JSON responses from API instead of rendering output? Security practices, preference of JavaScript over PHP. So these are the two uh, parts, like one is focused towards the content creators and the other is focused towards group to, towards the developers. So if you see on the left, the Drupal which focused on the on more of the content creator side, that is the coupled Drupal, and the Drupal that focused more on the developer side, it is the fully decoupled Drupal, and the Drupal which strikes a balance between them is a progressively decoupled Drupal. So from these uh, these points, like you have to think, you have to actually think that what are the most valuable points for your project. There are no black and white answers for this. The needs for every project would be different. There would be different pros and cons. But this is definitely a very high level hits what uh, you might want to go through before making a final decision. Are you more concerned about the disadvantages or are you more focused on the advantages? So uh, when I was uh, going through the decoupled Drupal uh, site, I, w I came across a banner that said that a conference about the future of Drupal. So lastly, I wanted to include this slide. I thought that it would be really incomplete to conclude this session without having said two words on the future of Drupal. So I included the slide and this slide talks about so currently, uh, if you see what we have uh, right now, if you are a decision maker of your project, then you have to, you know, pick one thing and you have to leave another thing. For example, if you want to pick the content creator's need, then you might want to leave the editorial needs behind. So the Drupal currently we have, it has some gaps between the developer needs and the content creator needs. So. I hope in future we have a Drupal which uh, which maintains, which bridges these gaps and currently we have a lot of developer teams experimenting you know, on front end and it's my hope to see a lot of improvement over there and a time may come that these gaps are really bridged and we don't have to pick one and let the other one go. So uh, the conclusion of this session is um, that before jumping to a final decision, you have to really uh, make a deep thinking on what are the things that, is, uh, that are needed before jumping to decoupled or not using decoupled Drupal approach. So these are some of the focus areas while making a final decision. So the first one says you, uh, your need would determine the useful of decoupling Drupal. 
The second one is measure the trade-offs by differentiating which features are the most valuable for your project. The third one is does your project need editorial capabilities and then does your uh, developer team needs to experiment on the front end. Do you plan to build standalone applications or want to off offer multiple experiences? And the last one, uh, it's up to you how you reconcile the tension between the developer team and the editorial requirements. So once you figure that out, that would be best, uh, that would best determine the approach you choose. Uh, any questions? Traditional way, yeah, I have worked, and I have worked on uh, integrating uh, decoupled Drupal. Uh, the back end was Drupal, and the front end was Vue.js. So we are in progress of doing this. Um, yeah, you can see that. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, did you do any like writing? Uh, writing in sense of editing. Editing content? Uh, uh, like, so I am a developer basically, but yeah, uh, I, I at times you know uh, I might want to add some content to the site to do some sort of testing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, did you build a decoupled ed editor uh, tools for editing Drupal? No, 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 not uh, not not anything <coughs> specific. But uh, anything specific you want to know about it? Uh, no, just asking. Uh, uh, no, so not, not, not as of now, yeah. Any more questions? Yeah? I, what was your, I guess, if you could say the top three challenges you've had in most project, projects when you're decoupling, when you're doing either progressive or fully decoupled, what have your, been your top three challenges? So the top three challenges, the first one is the team structure because I would definitely need to have uh, somebody from the front end side who is more comfortable with the JavaScripting part because I'm not a JavaScript person, I mainly am a back-end person and I do a little bit of JavaScript only, so this is one thing. Another thing is, uh, yeah, definitely if I want to do some sort of layout or the preview part or the workflow management stages like the drafts, or any sort of content moderation, then th those things are not available out of the box, and I have to reinvent the wheel for that. So that's that's time consuming and challenging in terms of project deadlines. Yeah. The third one. Um, the third one is um, the theming capabilities are not the, the for example Drupal the, that provides the layouts. Right, so th th those parts are not available out of the box with decoupled Drupal. So yeah, that has to be reinvented as well. Any more questions? So, thank you for being a great audience. <laughs> that was it.